Welcome to the channel Bharat's Pharmacy. In this video, I am going to explain about uh, surgical dressings. So what do you mean by a surgical dressing? Surgical dressing is a term applied to a wide range of materials that is used for dressing the wounds or injured or diseased tissues. The dressings it may serve for a various purpose. First one, provide an environment for moist wound healing and uh, prevent maceration. So it means it's a wet condition because of the continuous exudates when it is not getting absorbed, the wound is getting hydrated and it causes maceration. So when you start using a dressing, it permits enough evaporation and so that it prevent maceration and it promote hemostasis when it arrest bleeding and that uh, protect the wound from further damages and it reduces the heat loss to maintaining the body temperature, promote autolysis, so breaks down of the, the dead uh, necrotic cells. And uh, when you use uh, dressings, it uh, promotes the healing. So without a dressing, it will take a week time. But with the dressing, the, comparatively, the number of days is getting reduced so that the healing of the wound, it will be very faster. And also it provides supports, it reduces the bad order from the wound and improve the appearance of the wound site so that it gives the comfort for the others. And uh, when you select the dressings, it should have some ideal characters. The first one, it should reduce the overall cost associated with the wound treatment or management. And it should have the capability, it absorbs the excess secretions or exudate, especially during uh, the burns treatment. And it should be free from substances that cause tissue reactions, especially irritations or toxicity. The material, what we are making a surgical dressing, it should be inexpensive, non-inflammable, and it should be capable of being sterilized by the conventional methods, either moist heat or dry heat or by chemical methods. It should be unaffected by the domestic or industrial fluids like uh, detergents and oils. It should also have a constant physical property during normal uh, storage conditions and it should not require any specialized or specific storage conditions. The material what we are using, it should be uh, sealable to the skin and if it is desired by an agent, it is unaffected by industrial solvent. But even after using, it should be easily removable from the uh, skin, uh, the place where we are attached and without uh, much uh, physical discomfort like pain. In selection of wound dressing on the basis, uh, there are three major bases uh, we have to consider at the time of selection of the dressing. The degree of exudation, the amount of uh, exudate, it won't be same from every type of uh, a wound. So burns always, it will be having a heavy exudate. The mild cut, it, it won't be having a much exudate. So the degree of exudation, it decides uh, what type of dressing you have to select. And presence of necrotic tissue, that it's cell accumulation on the wound site and the anatomical site and the stage of repair. Anatomical site in mean in sense, so in the head when you have some cut or injury, so where it's a full of hairy areas where you cannot select a normal dressing. So maybe on the intact skin, maybe on the hands or on the face, when you want to have, when you have some wound, there you have to select a different type of dressing, armpits and the different areas. So that is why the anatomical site is also having a much significant in selection of your dressing. And stage of repair, the wound that is having uh, on the day of one, the wound will be heavily exudating. Uh, uh, exudates will come by the time you need some dressing. And after two, three days, uh, the exudate will be stopped and only the covering of wound is required. And after three, four days or a week time, you just completely cover uh, the wound site. So you don't require to, uh, the exudates, it won't come where the absorption is not required. So these three stages, uh, different types of dressing material, it is required. So that is why the selection of a wound dressing material is based on this mainly uh, these four characters, a degree of exudation and the presence of uh, necrotic tissues, anatomical site, as well as the stage of repair. So the classification of surgical dressing, this is what the usual and repeated uh, the five mark questions in the university examination. So this classification, uh, mainly the general classification, as per the Mington, it is uh, classified into three major type, primary wound dressings, Primary comes secondary, otherwise it is called uh, the composite dressing and the sec third one is secondary wound dressings. And uh, BPC is also classified these surgical dressings in uh, various methodology. 
and like fibers are plain and medicated, fabrics are plain and medicated, rubber and oil impregnated fabric materials and compound dressings otherwise as composite dressing, general bandages like self-adhesive plasters and medicated bandages etc. So I am going to explain you here the general classifications with a specific example. So the first one is the primary wound dressings. A primary wound dressings is the one that directly contacts the wound site. It may provide absorptive capacity and may prevent the desiccation, infection and addition of the secondary dressing to the wound. So the examples are three types, plain gauze, impregnated gauze and film dressing. As I explained you in the previous slide, the selection of wound dressing is based on the stage of repair. On the first day, we have to go with uh, the film dressing of the wound site. Maybe second or third day, you can go with the impregnated gauze. And finally, when you're just covering the wound site, you require only the plain gauze. So based on the severity of the wound, the dressings can be selected in the reverse order. So film dressing on the first two, three days, and then uh, fourth, fifth days in impregnated gauze. And finally, you can stand with the plain gauze. So plain gauze, what it is, it's a widely used uh, the primary dressing material. And it is nothing but it is just a bleached cotton cloth which of a plain weave used for bandaging and as a dressing. It adheres to the other uh, clean and incest wounds. And main property it has been used. It removes the exudates or debride from the infected and the necrotic tissue. But since it is sticky to the uh, wound site, at the time when you remove this plain gas, it will be highly uh, painful. If you directly unused on the first day of the wound site, it will be sticky with the nature. So by the time when you remove the dressing, it will be highly painful. And the second category of uh, primary dressing is impregnated gauze. So to avoid the stickiness to the wound site, this uh, impregnated gauze is made and it is used to reduce its adherence to the wound site. So you can select the cotton, a rayon or a cellulose acetate gauze which is impregnated with a variety of substances like a petroleum or paraffin or petrol atom emulsion and sodium chloride zinc saline. So these are all the materials are impregnated with this material so that uh, when you apply it on the wound site, the stickiness to the wound site is getting reduced so that at the time when you remove, there is no pain. It may be easily wear off and allows epithelial ingrowth. It necessitates the dressing change periodically. And the secondary dressings should be used with these dressings so that it prevents the entry of pathogens and it provides a better absorbency. When it is used with the secondary dressings, these may be used in the heavily exudating wounds. And the commercially available brands are Acopo, Sherwood and Neutradress. The third category, it is a film dressing. So this film dressings it is having a three types. Um, a transparent film, occlusive or a semi-occlusive. The films of polyurethane with acrylic or polyether adhesives and it provides a semi-permeable membrane to water vapor and oxygen and so that it acts as a waterproof also. And this can be used in the lightly exudating wounds and it permit enough evaporation to promote moist wound healing and also it prevent the maceration. It adheres well to the intact skin and it uh, have a lesser or nil absorption or uh, adherence to the uh, wound site. And it should not be used uh, on the infected or heavily exudating wounds because it doesn't have the heavy absorption or uh, absorptivity power. So for film dressing, the commercially available brands are Tegaderm, Dermacyte and Opsite. So coming to the second category, uh, the composite dressing, otherwise it is called the primary come uh, secondary wound dressings. It is having a primary and secondary components in, that, in it and it prevent adherence to the wound and also it is having some degree of absorbency. So there are three examples under uh, secondary dressing. So the fir first one is hydrogel and non-adherent dressing that allow a high rate of evaporation as well as a good cooling. And without compromise, compromising uh, the wound hydration, it is mainly useful in the burn treatment. So film dressings, it won't be suitable for uh, the uh, burn treatment because of the heavily exudates, uh, continuous exudates. So there, this hydrogel material, it is highly useful. And these hydrogels are prepared, are nothing but it is the uh, complex lattices in which a dispersal medium is just trapped. And it is used to mainly a polyvinyl pipe 
pyronidone or polyacrylamide or polyethylene oxide gel. So these are the materials are widely used for the preparation of hydrogel. And it is highly useful even in the hairy areas because the entrapment of the hair into the dressing would not be traumatic. And uh, commercially available brands of this hydrogels are Flexderm and Nugel. And uh, the second category or second example under uh, the composite dressings are hydrocolloid dressings. So the name it, itself, uh, hydro and collide. Hydrocolloid, a mass consists of the gum-like material uh, like a pectin, sodium, carboxy, methyl cellulose or guar gum. And these hydrocolloids are the dispersants of the particles and it forms a cell-like structure. And here the fluid absorption it occurs and the particle swelling and enlargement of this structure it will happen. And this is also it is suitable for uh, moderate to highly exudating uh, chronic wounds uh, like uh, burns and the examples of coloplast and replica. But this hydrocolloid dressings, it absorbs the exudate and the color of the hydrocolloid material, it gets changed into yellow in color and that it won't give you the uh, pleasant uh, feel or the appearance on the wound site. So because of this hydrocolloid material, uh, people they don't uh, prefer as like uh, the uh, hydrogel. Hydrogel, it absorbs the same exudate, but the appearance of the wound site, it always it will be, it give a pleasant uh, appeal or appearance. And examples of uh, hydrocolloid dressings, commercially available brands are Coloplast and Replicare. And coming to the third category of the third examples under uh, uh, secondary dressings are calcium alginate dressings. That is fibrous non-woven held in the place with the gauze tape or film dressing. Earlier, this alginic acid, it is derived from the uh, seaweeds. And uh, as such alginic acid, when we use, it is having a very good absorptivity power. And even the heavily exudating wounds, very well you can use alginic acid. Initially, this alginic acid, when it was used as such, even though it is having a good absorptivity power, because of the acidic condition or acid pH, it causes some mild irritation. So this uh, alginic acid later it was converted into a sodium alginate. But sodium doesn't have any, uh, just only it is neutralizing the acid. Then later when you start uh, using as a hemostasis mechanism, so the sodium alginate is replaced with the calcium alginate and today commercially we are very successful with the, this calcium alginate dressing. So alginate it serves uh, heavy to moderate to heavily heavy absorptivity power and calcium it increases uh, the hemostasis or it arrests the bleeding. The calcium it serves it involves in the, in the blood clotting mechanism. So commercially available brand names with the calcium alginate dressings are Algosterol and Caltostat. And the third category of uh, the surgical dressing is secondary wound dressings. So mainly absorbents like a surgical cotton. Cotton is the basic surgical absorbent material. It is widely used uh, and it is officially purified cotton of United States Pharmacopoeia. There are two types of cotton it is used commercially today. One it is absorbent cotton, the other one it is non-absorbent uh, bleached cotton. Absorbent cotton is prepared from the raw fiber by using a series of process that it removes the natural waxes as it, it is present naturally and also it, all impurities like uh, seeds what it is present in the cotton and other foreign substances and it render the fibers are more absorbent. It is practically pure and white cellulose paper. Uh, besides the familiar roll form, it also available in the various forms like uh, cotton balls and cotton tipped applicators uh, based on the type of uh, wound or based on the type of application or anatomical site the right cotton material can be select. These absorbs uh, fluids faster than and it retains uh, their shape better than uh, the cotton balls. The second one is non-absorbent bleached cotton. So the same uh, methodology which is adapted except uh, it retains the natural oils and waxes in the cotton so that uh, uh, this cotton it will be uh, behave as a non-absorbent cotton. It's mainly used in various uh, microbiological lab uh, to plug the uh, organism containing uh, test tubes. And this cotton is identified easily by its silky feel compared to an absorbent cotton. And because it is repellent to water, it does not become mated or inelastic. And consequently, it is well adapted to packing, padding, and cushioning of dressings over traumatized areas. And as a non-absorbent backing and the sanitary napkins also, it combines and uh, with various drainage dressings 
And to make a more strengthened material, today we are using rayon or regenerated cellulose as a secondary dressing. And it is made from the wood or a cotton linters, a soft cloth linen used in the dressings. After dissolving it in a, a mixture of alkali and carbon disulfide, the cellulose thread is re-precipitated in an acid coagulating bath. And this can be passed through a fine holes in a metal plate and you can get a different strengths of rayon regenerated cellulose. These rayon fibers are softer and also it is more lustrous than cotton. And thank you. That's all about uh, this surgical dressing. Catch you on another uh, video with a uh,